Hey guys, happy Friday. I just thought I would jump on here real quick because I am gonna start doing a little segment on Fridays called Feature Fridays. And I'm just calling it that because I'm gonna different, I'm gonna feature something different every Friday if work permits that is, as long as I can get off work in time to do it. Um, I was off today. So anyway, I'm gonna start doing just a little feature called Feature Fridays where I am going to feature um, different plants my favorites is what i'm going to start with of course and stuff that um is different stuff that you can't find easily at the grocery store and hopefully encourage you to grow some new and different things you know we don't have to grow just the things that we see at the grocery store a traditional beef steak um, a traditional watermelon we can have seeds to grow just about anything um, as long as it is able to be grown in in our area so we can't grow pineapples or bananas or anything like that but there's a lot of things that we sure can grow that we do not grow and that you would probably never see in the grocery store so one of the things that i'm going to talk about today is called the mortgage lifter and it is a type of beefsteak tomato that um, became pretty famous back in the 30s during the depression time this tomato was developed by a guy named N.C. Biles, I think it was. Um, well, also known as Radiator Charlie, they called him. So during the Depression, he began to get worried that he would not have enough money to uh, pay his bills. So he decided that he would come up with a tomato variety that would just be top notch and, and the biggest and the best tasting tomato. And so what he done was he developed a tomato by planting a German Johnson in the middle and then he planted like three different others um, around that tomato. He hand pollinated some and I think it was after six years he came up with a tomato that he thought was top notch and from what I hear it is, I have never had this tomato before. Uh, this is my first year growing it but I'm so excited to grow it. So after six years, when Mr. Biles determined that he had finally obtained a stable tomato that he could sell, he sold them for a dollar a piece then. And back during the depression, that was a lot of money then, but he, he did sell them for a dollar a piece and was very successful. As a matter of fact, he made enough money with those tomatoes to pay off his mortgage, which then was $6,000, which is unheard of today. but. That is a magnificent tomato and the pictures that I've seen which I'll insert a picture of what one looks like at maturity but this is the plant and I'm excited to have one this year so I'm gonna do uh, my feature Fridays I'm gonna do three different things I'm gonna do a tomato a melon and a pepper variety until I run out of stuff to do and then I may do something else but for now I'm gonna do one of each of those So that was the mortgage lifter. And so the next thing that I'm gonna do is called the Kajari melon. And this will be my third year attempting to grow the Kajari melon. Now the Kajari melon, um, I got the idea from Roots and Refuge Farm, which is a homesteading channel that I love to watch on YouTube. And so when I heard her talking about how delicious the Kajaris are, then I really wanted to try some. So I ordered the seed and I tried some the first year. Um, we, I did not think that I had any fruit on the plant at all until some of the stuff started dying back. I think I had some disease that had gotten a hold of um, a couple of my vining things that year and it included the Kajari melon. So I, I didn't think that I had any fruit from it at all, um, but at the end of the year when I started pulling back some of the dead stuff, I did find a small melon at the bottom of all of the dead debris and I pulled it out and it had already fallen off the vine and it was almost ripe but not quite so I and it wasn't it didn't reach full maturity but it was almost there and so I did go ahead and cut it open and tasted of it and it was sweet even though it was not uh, fully developed and it it was really good and so I thought wow if it's this good before it's even fully developed, I can only imagine what it would taste like fully mature. So I planted it again the next year. I saved the seeds out of that. 
uh, because when I purchased the seeds, I only had a few. And last year I did get a couple fruits off of it. I still didn't get a whole lot. So y'all, I am determined to get some prolific mature melons out of this plant this year. So I'm gonna take extra special care of it this year and see what I can get. So I think I got my seeds originally from rareseeds.com, which is a great place to get seeds if you want something that is different, uh, something that you cannot buy at the store. That's a great place to get seeds. I buy a lot of seeds there. Kajari originally came from India and a man uh, by the name of, I forget his first name, Mr. Simcox is all I can remember. Um, but he decided to try and find some of these seeds because they were unheard of in this region in the United States. Um, so he went on a quest to find these seeds and brought them to the United States. And so we have been blessed by them ever since. And so the melons are, are really small. They're like a personal sized melon and they are kind of green with orange mixed into it. They are beautiful to look at. Um, they also, if, when you cut them open, they are like a um, pale peachy looking color. It, it reminds you very much of a cantaloupe and the taste even reminds you of a cantaloupe, but I personally think that it is sweeter and even more flavorful than a cantaloupe. And when you go into the garden where the melons are grown, you can smell them before you ever even get close enough to pick one and they smell divine. So, I will insert a picture of what the Kajari melon looks like after it has reached maturity. These are delicious, and I hope that I have encouraged somebody to try the Kajari melon this year. And last but not least, the third thing I'm gonna to feature today is, can you guess what that is without looking at the, stickers. That's a, that's a jalapeno pepper plant. That's hard to say fast. So this is probably my very favorite pepper and it is so versatile. You can do so many things with it and my favorite thing to do with it is to make something called cowboy candy and I can show you what, a, what that looks like. You may not be able to see it very well. Um, I do mine like a relish so I chop the peppers up really fine and I, I candy them is what it's called. And that's just where you put them in vinegar and sugar and some spices. And you can actually preserve them in jars. You can can them. And a lot of people just do slices and then they put the slices on tacos, hot dogs, hamburgers, you know, whatever you want. But I like to dice mine and make a relish type thing out of it. And I, I just feel like you can do even more with it whenever you do it in a relish style. You can use it as a dip. And that's probably my favorite way to eat it is just as a dip. So anyway, the jalapeno originated in Mexico, and I'm sure everybody has heard the uh, name chipotle pepper. Chipotle pepper comes from the jalapeno pepper. So all they do to make the chipotle pepper is they smoke it and dry it once they become very ripe. They don't pick them when they're green. Well, typically, you don't pick them when they're green to make a chipotle pepper. You wait until they've turned red, and that's the ripest they can become, which is also the hottest they can become, <clears throat> and then they dry them and then they smoke them. And that's how they make chipotle peppers. And so that is my favorite pepper. And I will also insert a picture of what the jalapeno looks like at its ripest, which is red. So anyway, I hope you all have enjoyed my Feature Friday as I try to introduce you all to different plants, different things that you may not have heard of before. And I hope that I have encouraged somebody somewhere to grow something you've never heard of before. Start a garden, whether it's in containers, whether you have a place in your backyard. If you don't have a place in your backyard, do container gardening, raised beds. There are so many things you can do. And even if you don't do anything but one tomato plant, this year, grow something. Grow something that you enjoy eating and you will be amazed at how addictive it becomes to uh, have a desire to grow something. So God bless you all. I hope you have a wonderful Friday and I will see you next time.